So I'd like to welcome you all to the 66th anniversary of the Mahanirvana of Sri Ramanasi. And from my point of view, or many people's point of view, or devotees, that that day on April 14, 1950, is like the completing of a circle. And that circle began to, with the origin of Arunachala, the mountain. That began when the earth formed. It's said to be there from the beginning of time of the earth. And Shiva was prayed to by Brahma and Vishnu to take a form in which people can worship and which your grace can flow from. And that form concrete form is that of Arunachala there now, existing now, and we'll, as long as we're here, that will be there. So Bhagavan Ramana said, Arunachala, or Shiva, exists in three forms. The first is Parabrahma. Now that we can't really talk much about, only when we have no thoughts, no words in our head, no mind, then we can experience that. The second form, he said, was that of a, a, the lingam. That would be Arunachala. So what happened, you can say in our time, uh, my time, or earlier people's time in the last century, that the time had come when Arunachala had to manifest to the world as the heart of the world, or the spiritual heart of the world. At, up to that point, it was known as a place of pilgrimage. It attracted many saints and sages, but it was still a regional place of pilgrimage. Tens of thousands of people came every year at Kartike Deepam, and it was celebrated as a form of Shiva, as it is now. But it was still regional, it was a South Indian event. Then we can say that the time came for the world to know of Arunachala. So what happened then? That Arunachala manifested himself in a 16-year-old boy in Madurai. He consumed the consciousness of that boy. That boy lost his individuality and it was drawn to the slopes of Arunachala, where he reigned at the on the slopes of the Arunagiri Yogi. So that's the third form that Bhagavan said Arunachala exists as, as Arunagiri Yogi. The Siddhi, the Siddhai, Siddha Rupa. So there he remained for 54 years. He wrote many verses in praise of Arunachala, the five hymns in praise of Arunachala. There was one, Dr. Sai, a Muslim professor, he questioned Ramana. He said, you are an Advaitan. You are a non-dualist. But you have singled out this mountain. And you have praised this mountain as being Shiva. You have said that as we identify ourselves with this body, the self identifies itself as this mountain. And then you have praised him as a separate entity. How can you do that? And Bhagavan answered, the praise, the words, the one who praises and the object of praise are all the self. So he had a pat answer for that because that was his experience. So it wasn't out of his own volition that all this happened. It was out of the grace of Arunachala that it happened. So. Bhagavan gave importance to the hill. He said, there's no inch on this mountain where my foot has not stepped. <laughs> he regularly walked around the hill, circumambulated the hill, till 1926, when it became too much of a commotion for him to do it. So in many ways, he brought the attention of the world to this hill as being the spiritual heart of the world. So when his mission was accomplished, then he was absorbed back into that mountain, or perhaps he's sitting there in a supernatural form as Arunagiri Yogi, we don't know. But Swami Vishwanathan, who was in the Nirvana room, 
said that at the time he took his last breath, he saw a flash of light in the room. And the light left the room. And then it was seen, a light in the sky, a luminous body moving slowly towards the north and disappearing behind the mountain. That was moving very slowly. It wasn't a physical luminous body, it was something supernatural. They saw it there in Arunachala, they saw it in Madras, they saw it in other places, that are in, South, in, in India itself, but it was a supernatural form. Just symbolic that Ramana Maharshi, who was born out of Ramanachala, returned to Ramanachala and completed his mission of bringing Ramanachala to the awareness of the world. Now I've been going there for 40 years and I see that now the engine is picking up. Uh, now for Giri production, uh, like in uh, what, Chitra, Pornima, there's millions of people walking around the hill. And all because of this stage, as a boy came there, in 1896. So, today, we'll have some friends doing some bhajan and some slokas. I'm going to show a couple of videos of two devotees who came to Ramana Maharshi during his time with a sole objective or objective of knowing the self or realizing reality or truth or self realization. Which is very important because. That's the main objective of life, and they came there for that purpose and had experience in this present history. But first, I'm going to begin with the Shuddha, but she has to leave pretty soon. You can see this from the Arana Chala Mahatma, and she's going to receive uh, the first some verses. <coughs> Arunachala Mahatmyam, or the glory of Sri Arunachala. Nandi said, this is the holy place of all Arunachala is the most sacred. It is the heart of the world. Know it to be the secret and sacred heart center of Siva. In that place, he always abides as the glorious Arunachala. The day on which the ancient and wonderful linga of Arunachala <coughs> took shape is the asterism of Agra in the month of Mridashira and the day on which Vishnu and the other devas worship the Lord in the form of effulgence is the day of Mahashivaratri. Shiva said, Though in fact fury, my lackluster appearance as a hill on this path is an effect of grace and loving solitude uh, for the maintenance of the world. Here I always abide as the Great One or Siddha. Remember that in the interior of my heart, is transcendental glory with all the enjoyments of the world also. This glorious Arunachala is that of which the mere sight suffices to remove all demerits which divide our being into egos and finite worlds. What cannot be acquired without endless pains, the true import of the Vedanta is easily attained by all who can either directly cite this hope or even mentally think of it from afar. I ordain that residence within a radius of three yojanas, one yojana segments of this hill, shall by itself suffice to burn off all defects and effect union with the Supreme, even in the absence of initiation. Devi said, this is, the, uh, this is always the abode of pious devotees. Those who do evil to others here will, after suffering ills, be destroyed. Wicked persons will be completely bereft of their powers to do evil here in the twinkling of an eye. Do not fall into the burning fire of the anger of the Lord Arunachala, who has assumed the form of the hill of fire. Mama. Uh -huh. 
However, I was still in the same state that I was in when my eyes were closed and didn't really register anything that was happening. After attending to the Tapar, Bhagavan got up to leave for the Goshala. I got up along with everybody else, but again, without any real awareness of my surroundings. Kameswarama, who was sitting next to me, helped me and said, Kanakama, you are extremely fortunate. Ever since you sat there, Bhagavan has continuously been looking directly at you until Mauni got the tapa. You have got everything. Bhagavan has given you all that you need. So saying, she hugged me close to her. But I was in no state to give a reply. I just told her, tears are streaming down my eyes. I don't know what to say. The waves of peace come over me.
Seeing me blinking in ignorance, Bhagavan proceeded to tell me that the mind is mere thoughts, and knowing oneself is to find the source of all thoughts. So saying, he pointed to his heart. Until then, I was concentrating only on the Bhumarga. However, when I turned my attention to the heart, I was led to Samadhi quickly. It was like a flash of lightning and I lost body consciousness. I realized that Bhagavan had given me the Samadhi experience. He was looking at me all along. I was looking into his eyes when I went into Samadhi. It was then time for lunch. After lunch also I came to Bhagavan's presence. Then by a single look, Bhagavan put me into Samadhi again. Henceforth, I would immerse myself in the blissful state again and again, oblivious of the body. In fact, I occasionally used to touch myself to check whether I had a body or not. I spent a happy 18 days like this at Skandashram. Someone used to offer food to Bhagavan from which all of us were also given a share. I started feeling guilty that instead of offering food to the Guru, we were eating out of a share and that this was not proper. Also at home, I had my own room where I could practice in peace as I felt I was established in Samadhi. I felt I could remain in Samadhi all day at home. Besides, this way, absolving of the sin of causing my guru a loss of food, I went back to my village. But as the time passed, the intensity of meditation lessened. When I noticed that I could no longer be in samadhi, I understood that the samadhi anubhava is by the grace of the guru and not by my own attainment. I felt that I shouldn't have come away from Bhagavan and that had Bhagavan used the same logic, he would have gone back to Tirichuri. When I returned to Skandashram, Perumal Swami was attending to Bhagavan's personal needs, like bringing hot water for him and so forth. Perumal Swami taught me how to look after Bhagavan's needs and entrusted me with that job as he had to leave for the nearby Kovilur month to attend some festivities. While I was attending on Bhagavan, I told him how the intensity of Samadhi had lessened once in my village. Bhagavan very graciously quoted from Kaivalya Navanitam that the Samadhi Anubhava occurs to everyone and anyone by the mere presence of the Satguru or by reading his works, but it would not be permanent. Bhagavan further explained that the state of Siddha Pragna has to be attained by Shravana, Manana and Nididhyasana. Again, he quoted from Kaivalya Navanitam, where it is said that just as one would dig the ground, plant a pole and pack the dirt back in order to secure the pole, one must practice incessantly in order to make the experience of Samadhi permanent. Again quoting Kaivalya Navanitam, he said that as long as the duality of the knower and known remains, one must practice. <coughs> These words of Bhagavan cleared my doubts and I have been with him ever since, serving him and following his instructions by his grace. <laughs>
चे न मित्र चे वयं चे सुखं चे शयन चे सुशासने सुदीन चे